Hi, everybody. Mike Hancock here, the chairman of the Circle of Excellence Group. Hi to everyone. Hi, Diane from Australia. You're probably one of the warmest people on this call. Oh, Pamela will be warm. It's always warm in Singapore. And Richard will be warmer. Well, it is summer in the Netherlands, so you never know. That could be 10 degrees. There's no doubt about that. So today I'm going to be sharing with you five most effective things, five things that I've found most effective in business. So this is not from Elon Musk. This is, this is from Mike. So these are things that have really helped me over the years build, retain, and really have something that's prosperous. So I'm also going to involve you guys, the people on this call in this as well. So I want, I definitely want to hear from you as we go through this, but I'm going to get underway and I'm going to start with a couple of ideas and then we're going to throw it over to you and see what you think. So be ready, be ready to go to the chat, be ready to share. So what I'm going to share today is five effective things, nurturing community, creating stickability, giving back, keeping one step ahead and always doing more. Let's have a look at nurturing community. And this photo is actually from the first Bali business school that we, we ran um, back in 2015, I think it was, yeah, 2015. And so uh, next year, it's 10 years that we've been running them. And of course, you know, because we just sent it out this week for the people on the call, um, September 15 to 19 in Bali this year. If you haven't got your ticket, definitely come along. So what about nurturing community? I think community is your strongest asset that you've got in your business. And I can't believe that more entrepreneurs don't try and create community out of their clients. I mean, who would have ever thought Apple could create a community? Who would have ever thought Virgin could create a community? I mean, they sell airplane tickets, Coca-Cola train tickets, if they even have those these days, and, you know, software and hardware. So how do you build a community there? I think you've got to find different ways for your community to engage. So one of the reasons I chose uh, the, the photo here of the Bali Business School is because this was a way for us to engage more people from around the world. And, you know, I wish Stuart Patton were on this call because uh, he contacted Lundy and I last week and he said, you know, he gave us about five or six different ideas to build the circle of excellence community because he thinks it's the most unique community he's been in in his 60 plus years on this planet. And he says, because it truly is trusted, there are amazing people in this community, but we don't make enough of what each and everyone is doing and how people can connect. He's so right. Of course, you know, we've got so much more ways to go. And Lundy's on a mission to find out how to do that and how to nurture you even more, find different ways for you to engage. When COVID came, we launched these global intelligence updates every, every week as a way for you to engage. So this is 2020, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We're in our fifth year of doing these every week. And so it's great that you come back. It's great that we can still get guests on that are really useful for you. It's great that some of you have been on these calls for years and years and years. So finding different ways, you've got to constantly looking, golf days, theater days, lunches, um, mastermind groups, any of these are great ways for your community to interact. Then constantly lift people up and recognize contributors. So you would know that we do recognize contributors here. Diane is a great example of that. Um, Philippe Gouchard is another great example. These people are constantly contributing in one way or another. And as many of you do, many of you on this call uh, to actually uh, contribute in one way or another. You're always ready to step up and be a guest or um, you know, have your story told in one way or another. And I really thank you for that. But in your own community, Get people to come and lift other people up. Celebrate people who you have in your community. Celebrate people who are doing great things. 
So this is for each and every one of you listening to this. If you ever have something great happen, please go to our Circle of Excellence community and actually share it on the community. Often I see things where, and I know Diane was one when she won Entrepreneur of the Year in South Africa in January of 2024. I said, Diane, can we share this on the on the Circle of Excellence community? Oh, yes, she says, you know, hello. We want to celebrate everybody here. So you've got to lift up and, and people and recognize your contributors as well. One great way of nurturing your community is to have some type of loyalty or incentive plan. Now, once technology catches up with us a little bit, we have our loyalty plan ready to go. Um, we have an incentive plan already. And, you know, uh, this week we emailed every, each and every one of you to let you know how to refer people into all of the different products in Circle of Excellence and, and what you can earn in that. But what are you doing for your clients? Now, if you have any unique ways for people to engage, if you have a way of recognizing people in your community, if you have a loyalty plan or an incentive plan, please go to the chat and let everybody know what it is. And, and I'd like to pick up uh, one or two things with you when we get to, uh, to looking at that. The next one is involve your community in decisions as you're taking your business forward. Focus groups are one of the best ways to do it. Um, we're running another focus group in the next uh, couple of months. We run, ran our last one just about six months ago now. So inviting people from your community into a focus group where you're working on what's going forward and what's happening next is really important. It's a way of bringing people in. It's a way of having confidence. It's a way of celebrating. It's a way of recognizing people. So that is nurturing community. Now I want to have a look at client stickability. So we're going to do a couple of these and then we're going to go to you, of course. So I'm really happy to say that Philip Silverman, Circle of Excellence member number one, is often on these calls um, even now. So that's 13 years later, um, just before this meeting, I was talking to Mark Robinson, who has been a client of ours since 2007. That's 17 years. You know, I'm not going to tell you we have every client stick, but I will tell you that 95% of our Circle of Excellence members stick and over 60% of them are active. So how do we get people to stick? So one of the ways is to move them to a DIY strategy. So when they buy your main product or service, whatever that is, then once they've gone through that experience with you is to allow them to have a more DIY approach. Now this is definite for consultants and coaches and speakers and those sort of people, but definitely for some businesses as well. So where somebody might come in and initially they might go through a program or they might be utilizing um, your advice in some way to do things, then can they order online? Can you create them a special loyal portal for them to order online so that they can do it all themselves? Can they go to online courses that can help them continue? And can you set up like a mini university where they can qualify for different badges as they go along? You know, can you get your clients involved in onboarding other clients or even mentoring other clients or be part of other clients' journeys? You know, it's so funny. You think you might be asking clients to, you know, do things that they don't want to do and help you grow your business and everything like that. But in my years, I found that most clients, most, almost all clients, love getting more involved in your business. They want to be part of your community. That's one of the reasons they joined you in the first place. They want to be part of this. And now, Richard, I know we've got you on the call. They want to be part of being environmentally aware. They want to be able to tell their friends and family of what they're doing. They want to be talking about their part in global cleanup. So, Involving them in different masterminds and groups and opening markets and things like that, a really good idea for client stickability. 
So you want to move your clients from being clients to ambassadors. You want to move them to being brand ambassadors for you. So before I even owned Circle of Excellence or its predecessor, Rock Your Life, I owned um, a building company. And one of our strategies initially was to try and find some celebrities that we could build houses for. And our first one that we got, and still was our biggest one, we got a guy called Jeff Wilson, who at the time was the all-black fullback for New Zealand and one of their best players still ever to this day. But he also was a black cap, played cricket for New Zealand, one of those rare people who played two major sports for his country. And we built his house. And we said to him, Jeff, would you become an ambassador for our brand? And he said, I'd love to. He didn't even charge us any money. And um, he allowed us to use his image on things. He allowed uh, shots of his house on things and stuff like that. And it really obviously helped us sell houses. So moving clients to ambassadors, they don't have to be celebrities, but a lot of you are ambassadors for us. I know we often have Sahaja on the call here. Um, and those type of people are, are fantastic ambassadors for us as well. Uh, many of you on this call are, in fact. So people want to know what else they can buy from you. So it's a really weird thing, but don't think that just once they've bought and they've gone through whatever they're going to go through with you, that they don't want more. They don't want something bigger. They don't want something better. And many of you know the story of how we launched our titanium program. And it was literally Landy and I rented a house in Tuscany for two months in 2016. And we're sitting there and we, we'd been challenged by um, one of our people on our board, Dustin, to say, you guys need to come up with a $100,000 product. And so we designed a, a week in Tuscany with Mike and Landy, put it on Facebook. Two people bought it. Literally two people bought it off our Facebook post. And we went, oh, this product actually works. And by the way, if any of, any of you want to spend, you know, four or five days with Mike and Landy anywhere in the world, then reach out to me and uh, we'll let you know what the price is. We'll work it out. We'll cost it based on where you want to go and we'll make it work. And we can spend one-on-one -on -one time with you somewhere in the world to your liking or your team if you want to bring your team. So, Coaching and a board of advice. Bring your clients in to be part of your board of advice. That can work. We've got uh, two clients on our board of advice and also bring them in to coach you on certain things as well. So if you have a client that's a tech guru, maybe they can give you some tech coaching. You know, it's interesting. Again, most of your clients will gladly step up and help you in these areas. And this creates such a stronger bond between you and them. So client stickability. And before that, of course, we have nurturing clients. I'm interested to go to, let me go to the chat first, because I've missed that. And um, let's see what people have come up with here. Richard says 100%. Chris has put in the link for Bali Business School. So I'm interested to see what other ways have you guys got of nurturing clients and getting them to stick around? Anybody got anything they would like to share? I'll sit here and gracefully drink my water and fill up the empty space for the people who are listening to this as an audio program or watching the video later. Is this all new stuff for you? I'm, I think some of you must have some wonderful ideas. So Diane, uh, Diane Dimitri, let's hear from you. One of the things I do to nurture my clients is to regularly stay in touch with them. So I have a process in which I stay in touch with them. I have got them sorted into various groups. So if, the, if they come from one particular conference, they're in one particular group, I will send them a, um, a high value uh, content article saying, I thought that this might help you in your particular role. I might send a different article to somebody else from a different conference as a speaker. That's what I'm, I'm doing is, is keeping in touch with them. And I also have uh, cards, gift cards, uh, printed and I will send them a gift card with a handwritten note in it. 
Um, for instance, with Saxton Speakers Bureau recently, they were coming into the end of the financial year. So every consultant at Saxton's got one of my cards and a little tea bag, a, a, a tea to uh, tea bag. And I just said, you know, knowing it's a busy time at the end of the year, take a break, have a cup of tea on me and look forward to uh, being able to add value to you and your clients in the new year, in the new financial year. So I endeavoured to do things like that whenever I can. Wonderful. And uh, I think they're great ideas. And, and something as simple as a handwritten card goes such a long way because all of us are so much in the digital space these days. It's so nice to get something handwritten from somebody. People keep it. Um, Pam says, doing an appreciation lunch, inviting them to other events that I'm participating in where they can continue to learn something. See, that's a fantastic idea. If you're in, in somebody else's event and you can get some tickets for people to come and see you and even have lunch with you and experience something else, that's a great idea. Um, and the appreciation of lunch is a fantastic idea. Uh, Richard says, uh, we enjoyed a, a customer experience team. Oops. Made Sorry, a massive uh, difference. Mark, I should, have, I should have put that as a we employed a customer experience team. Oh, I so we, we do enjoy. We do, in, you did put we it do as enjoy. Employed. I read it as enjoy. So tell us about it since you're live, Rich. Yes. Um. So we we our chairman about a year ago said, "What are you doing about your customers?" And it's a great question because we we tend to, um, especially on the early days, we were always a little unsure of our products, and um, sometimes if we didn't hear from our product uh, our customers, we didn't want to engage, but just in case our products were rubbish. Um. So now we kind of um. About 12 months ago, we, we reversed that and employed a, a CX team, which is customer experience or customer excellence, depending on how you want to look at it. We look at it as both. And it's not just there to be on the end of uh, an upset customer or dealing with a customer's challenge, but more proactively kind of reaching out um, on, on a fairly regular basis. You know, how's things going? Have you recharged your batteries? Hey, I see it's coming up for winter. Maybe you want to do X, Y, and Z. Or if it's coming up for spring, you're going to be out on the water more. You know, so really sort of proactive engagement. And it's brought our customers so much closer that you are able to deal with any challenges they have a lot quicker and with a lot less um, upset uh, from the customer side. Um, but also it allows us to, from a commercial point of view, introduce new products, new upgrades, a lot easier to say, oh, I see you're having a problem with that, but we've actually got this new accessory that if you oh, just purchase so. that and we'll give you a 10% discount or whatever, um, it'll make your life a lot easier. Um, and we found that the, the customers that weren't speaking to us previously weren't speaking to us because our product was rubbish. It was just quite good that they didn't need to speak to us, <laughs> um, and, you know, which, which was a great experience to find out as well, you know, that, that they weren't. They weren't shy because our, uh, our product was rubbish. It was actually, it was so great that they didn't need, feel the need to interact. And I think you bring up a great point there, Richard. Thank you so much for that. Is that a lot of people are nervous to speak to their customers because they think they'll open the can of worms where the worms will come out and they'll say, you know, can you do this better? I didn't like that or whatever they, they say, but it's really not the case. I mean, unless you have a whole lot of unqualified customers that you've hard sold into your products and services, then you're likely to have a few problems. But if you've chosen customers well and they've enjoyed the sales process, 90% of the time, well, more than 90, they're going to be enjoying the product and they're going to be enjoying your ongoing service. So thank you so much for, for that feedback. And uh, whilst I'm here, hi to Janice Corbus and Router as well. Let's uh, let's uh, jump back into the presentation. And then after a couple more, we're going to go back and we're going to actually uh, actually see where you guys are next time. Okay. Let's just run through these. And actually, I forgot one click here, which is exactly uh, what Diane was talking about: annual reviews, key dates key reasons for reaching out to people. Birthdays are another one. Um, you have to be careful with this stuff. If you start it, you can't stop it. And if you've got a business where you're growing a lot of clients, that one can be really hard. If you're only relying on 10 or 20 major clients, birthdays are a great one. If you're relying on two to 300 major clients, that can become quite tedious. I'm definitely not a 
you know, if I see it's your birthday, I wish you happy birthday. But I don't have a system for writing down what your birthday is because I know I'm just going to mess it up because I, I'll be on a plane or too busy or something like that. So I love you all. Happy birthday. I should have one day a year where I wish all my clients happy birthday. Let's talk about giving back. Giving back is, yeah, like the Queen's birthday, right? So um, we, we have the client's birthday. So giving back is probably one of the greatest things that you can do to advance your business. Now, it doesn't seem like that. And often you sort of go, why am I doing this? But I have to tell you, it gives you so much more than what it takes from you. So the real message here for each and every one of you is to be a go-giver and not a go-getter. Now, it's okay to be a go-getter, but providing that's in balance with being a go-giver. So you can give money, you can give time. Some of you have become so much of a go-giver that your, your whole business has become a giving back business. I.e. Richard, what you're doing with the environment, et cetera, et cetera, is definitely that. Um, the second thing is it does open a lot of doors by doing so. And one of my examples was maybe 10 years or more ago now, I was invited to be part of a very odd board in New Zealand. And the, the foundation had been set up and it was the foundation to govern and train foundations. So there are 40,000 registered foundations in New Zealand. That's a lot, right, for a country of four and a half million people, 40,000 registered foundations. So this foundation was set up to give them some idea of how to actually run their foundation. And so I agreed to be on the board, even though I had no time. The, the woman who was the chairwoman talked me into it, and I was thinking, I just have no time, and but I, I'll do this because I really like the idea. And suddenly I found myself on the board with the Ray Avery, who was the current New Zealander of the year. Um, Michael Hill, I'm going to talk to the New Zealanders on the call. Janice, you'll understand this. Michael Hill, who is one of the most well-known business entrepreneurs uh, in New Zealand. Um, Dick uh, Hubbard, who, um, who was uh, a serial entrepreneur. Hubbard Cereals, in fact. Uh, and uh, the other one was the guy who started the warehouse. I mean, these are some of the biggest brands in New Zealand. And they were on the board. And to, to this very day, I still have two close friends from that board. Uh, Mitchell Pam, he's a, a Vietnamese guy who is a business icon in New Zealand. Um, and, and Rowan Schaaf, who at that time was the head of Ogilvy's advertising in New Zealand. So the connections and the doors that open by literally giving very little of my time. It was like a couple of hours a month to be on that board and just go through the basic governance that you go through on those boards, very useful. It's great for your brand and positioning as well. And even yesterday I was doing a podcast, I was telling Chris before, um, this podcast was uh, out of Austin, Texas, but this guy was uh, you know, the thing that he chose to focus on in my introduction was my giving back. So that was really interesting. It's great branding um, there in that. And it's great for your positioning. You know, even this photo, I mean, we don't use checks anymore. So, but this photo of me handing over a check to fund a school in India, which is some time back now, but I can't tell you how many times I've used this photo. So I decided to drag it out again today. So, um, I mean, we basically paid for this school to operate for a year. That's the check we're holding there. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's essentially that, that was something that uh, I've got uh, on, a, on a bigger photo with Bill Clinton's signature on it and all of that sort of thing. It's just, it's just fantastic for your brand and giving back. Um, it definitely helps you to be taken more seriously. And, you know, if you're an entrepreneur that's just all for making money, driving the latest Ferrari, being flashy and lying on a beach, 
um, you're definitely not going to be taken as seriously as somebody who's really seen to be contributing. And of course, guys, I don't want to give you the, the message here that, you know, you just contribute because it's good for business. You have to be genuinely interested in what you're contributing to. So currently, you know, I have three boards that I'm on, on obviously the Global Speakers Federation board, because I'm really wanting to give back to the global speaking industry. I want it. I literally want it to become a much more professional industry. I'm on the board of the Sage Foundation, which is all about enlightened education for underprivileged children. So a lot of our programs and things go out to underprivileged kids around the world as part of this. And, you know, we've been involved in helping schools primarily in India, but also in Africa, uh, in Bangladesh, in Cambodia. Um, so is, is our main areas. And the, the third one there is the Global Dialogue Federation, which is all about creating unity and diversity. Another one of my platforms, if you like, is having a very unified and diverse world. So whatever you do, it has to be right for you, whether it's cooking the sausages, um, you know, for the kids' barbecues to raise money for your kids' school, or whether it be going on a global board, for instance, it doesn't matter, or whether it be simply donating 10% of your income uh, to some sort of charity. And if you're going to do that, then please talk to me and I'll put you in touch with my friends at Buy One, Give One. Why do I want you to talk to me first? Because you can just do it through them. Because anybody we refer, um, they track. And so we can see the effect of our referrals. And I just got an email from them yesterday. Since they started in a cafe in the Duxton Hotel in Perth at a conference I was running in 2007, they've now just hit 350 million gifts of giving since uh, 2007. It's incredible. So um, we want to track, we like to track our impact in that. So if you want to give back to any cause financially and give any money to any cause, um, you can contact me and I can put you in touch with buy one, give one. And lastly, it gives you different conversations to have with people. So imagine you go to a networking event and at that networking event, suddenly you're not talking about, hey, I've got this new product or we do this amazing thing or whatever. You're talking about, well, I was cooking the sausages at my kids' barbecue last week for their school. This is one of the things I've been involved in, the, you know, the, 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 the parents and advisory team for the last three years, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it just gives you different talking points. And once you've done it for a while, it gives you stories. I mean, today I'm using this photo. It gives me a story to help you guys really become better at business and more successful at business. So all of these things are stories. I mean, um, one of my talks involves, involves a child with a banana that I gave them in Cambodia. And I mean, that to me is just uh, one of the most significant stories because until I was in Cambodia and until I gave that child a banana, I never truly understood the value of giving back. You have to come and hear that one if you want to hear it. So that's giving back. Let's look at the next one. The next one is how you keep one step ahead. So these are some of my ideas for keeping one step, step ahead. Simple thing, spend one Friday afternoon a month researching. Friday afternoons for most of us, you know, the week's winding down. You have to be really hardcore to be out closing sales on a Friday afternoon. So what is it that you're going to do? Well, for me, spending a Friday afternoon researching is a really good way to do things. What do you research? Well, what about the latest trends in your industry? What about what some of your newest and most technologically advanced competitors are doing? What about having a look, a look at some of your competitors' websites and see how they're positioning and branding? What about looking at something that you could involve in your business that could be a new potential product for you or a new uh, line or a new strategic partnership? What about if you looked at who could potentially be a joint venture partner for something that 
you want to do, et cetera, et cetera. One Friday afternoon a month, three to four hours, 36 hours a year, you're going to, that's a lot of research. 36 hours is a week's research. So, you know, doing that and is going to keep you one step ahead. Then try and find simple and unique things that your people, your customers and your prospects like. What could be a good example of that? It could be a gift. It could be something that you use that can really benefit them. You know, we talk about a lot of the softwares that we use and things like that. Um, it could be the latest and greatest AI that you're using that you really love. And whatever it is, if you ta start talking about that, then I generally find that people think that um, they thank you for the advice. Uh, a lot of them use it themselves. Like last night, uh, I was doing a, a webinar for the Professional Speakers Association of Southern Africa. Uh, one or two of you may have been on the, on the call there. And, you know, somebody asked me, what softwares do we use? What SaaS products do we use? And I was raving about um, our CRM that we use, which only costs us $36 a month. And so it's things like that that, uh, I know that some of our clients are using the same CRM process uh, now and they're really enjoying it as well because you can fully customize it. So simple things like that are very good for keeping a step ahead because they make people think that you're on top of your game. This is the biggest one. I, I spoke about this last night. If I had have known this 10 years before I did, um, I would have been 10 years ahead of where I am now. If you want to keep one step ahead in business, you need a really great designer. So most of you know the story, but I'm going to repeat it here for the ones who don't know it, is back in 2015, Lundy and I were in 40 countries that year. We literally spent over six weeks inside an airplane. So how are we going to get anything done? And by the way, if you don't believe me about the six weeks inside an airplane, go and look at traveling to 40 countries and the average length of a flight and how long that takes. It's six weeks, I know, I did the math. And so um, then we realized we needed a new system to keep everything uh, together. But we had to then study, what are we doing with our day? So I loaded an app on my laptop, which is still on my laptop today, called Rescue Time. And I'm sure there are better ones, but I subscribe to this now. And Rescue Time tells me where I'm spending my time online. And back in 2015, I was spending 46% of my online time in design. So I was averaging around about four hours a week online at that stage. So that's two hours a week. Sorry, four hours a day. So that's two hours a day I was spending in design. More than a day a week designing. So I went, hang on, my time's more valuable than that. So we just went out and hired a designer. And these days we use a design group where we pay a regular monthly amount. So everything that you see here from the background of my slide to the way the slides put together, everything you ever see come out from us is comes from that design system. And for the cost of less than a thousand US dollars a month, we have a full-time designer. And I can tell you that it's put us ahead of the market. So if you want to get one step ahead of the market, a great designer. Now, I know you're going to tell me, hey, but there's Canva and hey, there's all these things. You're still doing it all. And that means that you're probably a designer. So, and you know, unless you've got a background in graphic design, you're never going to be able to do what a designer does. And you're never going to be able to interpret what you want the way a designer can interpret what you want. So this to me is one of the key things in getting ahead of the game. Then I want you to upgrade relationships more than technology. So what does that mean? We're so focused on upgrading our tech and keeping one step ahead and having the latest AI. And, you know, I feel sorry for people who are in SaaS companies. You know, many of you know that we use uh, a Groove CRM 
So Groove CRM is, is our funnel software. It's our webinar software. It's all of our funnels. It's our payment gateways. It's all of that. You know, when they launched it, I went for it because my previous funnel software, which was ClickFunnels, was costing me around $800 a month. And I was able to get that price down. In fact, I was one of the beta launches. So I bought a lifetime membership. So we don't pay for that, which is phenomenal. But then when they launched, they launched at $300 a month. You know, you can buy Groove these days for $42 a month. I mean, these people have, a, have to do a lot of work to maintain technology. And there's certainly more and more people doing better things in the marketplace today than ClickFunnels are, than Kartra are, than GrooveFunnels are, because somebody new is starting today. In fact, I've got two new ones to check out that I learned about this week. Whereas instead of spending all your money and time and transferring all your clients over from one system to another and doing all of that, stick with something that's good and robust and going the mile and spend your time on upgrading your relationships. That is the place to do it. Then next one, give people different ways to, plug. that's meant to say plug, not plus, to plug and play with you. Meaning, how can you do this differently? How, is there ways they can work with you that doesn't involve you? Is there smaller products they can buy for you? Is there bigger products? We call it a value waterfall. So these days, we have a value waterfall anywhere from zero to $100,000. So anywhere in that price range, there are steps, of course. So if you said, can I buy something off you for you know, $68.25, I'd probably go, mm, maybe. But, you know, anywhere in that area, there are ranges of price zones. Your clients want to interact with you at different, different levels of your game. Let me just go to the chat now and let's see what we've got here. So holiday vouchers, Sam. It's a great idea having holiday vouchers. Uh, Pam said, I also invite the big boss to lunch with no agenda. That's great. Uh, Stephen Tyndall, thank you, Janice. I couldn't remember his name. And uh, and Dealey says, hi, Mike, what's the CRM system you are using? My network, not the best, so I missed it. We use Capsule. Capsule is our CRM that we use, but all of our funnels and everything like that and all of our marketing sits on Groove. So it's that's called Groove CRM. So, um, so you can find it from Groove Funnels. If you just Google Groove Funnels, you'll find the marketing software. If you want to look at this, our CRM system, that is Capsule. So let me do the last one of these. Then I'm going to go to you. And then I've got a couple of bonus things I want to talk about. Oh, here's the last one on getting one step ahead. Go for awards. I should have known that. That's why I put this photo here with a selection of my speaking awards, right? Diane will tell you, Diane Borman will tell you this because she's on this call today, you know, it's phenomenal being recognized for awards. And she's won two major ones in the last 12 months. So Middle East Changemakers Award and a South African Entrepreneur of the Year Award. So, I mean, these are things that you, the only time your awards, they do have a lifespan. I reckon probably about eight years, nine years is a lifespan. You know, I would love to have an updated Speaker of the Year, but I, I just don't allow myself to go in for those now. Um, and I haven't since 2018. So that's my last speaker of the year one. I think it'll last me probably until 2028. Then I probably should have got another one, but I'm going for other, other awards these days. So go for awards. Getting regular awards. Landy won a, a major award, um, uh, an African Women's Leadership Award this year. Um, you know, we thought it might be a, a bit of a dart award, but when we got to the presentation, she was standing on stage with people from Coca-Cola and Price Waterhouse. So we, you know, it was great to, for her to win that award. So this is something I think it's a good thing when you go for your local business awards because simply filling on in all the stuff they need helps you understand where you are in your business as well and helps you understand where you're missing. So I've had a couple of clients come to me this year and say, can you help me um, with my award stuff? And I've seen easily by looking at the forms where they're missing. And that's something that they've been able to work on, not to, missing to get the award, but missing to keep one step ahead in business. 
Let's have a look at our last one. And this is about always doing more for people. So let's see what that means. Firstly, over deliver. For those of you that are a Circle of Excellence member, um, I don't talk about probably three or four things that we do for you when you become a Circle of Excellence member when I'm pitching Circle of Excellence. I like it to be a surprise for you. Also, one of the things I don't talk about is that once you've been a Circle of Excellence member for five years and you've renewed for five years, you become a lifetime member. We don't charge you again, okay? So once you've made those five years payment for Circle of Excellence, we don't do that. This is part of our over-deliver strategy. What are you doing? What secret trump cards have you got that you can um, pull out that show that you over-deliver for people? Next is give them something out of the box, something very cool, very unusual. You know, we like to invite people to product launches. Pam, I love you're taking the big boss to lunch without an agenda thing. That's something out of the box. You know, we have Lead Magazine. That's why I use this. You know, we feature a lot of you in Lead Magazine from time to time. That's something out of the box. Upgrade people. Don't you love business class? So, you know, why can't you give some of your people free upgrades to things that you're doing? So that just might, you know, if you're selling them tiered programs, maybe giving them a free upgrade is something that will be fantastic for them. So that can really help them feel part of something and can also help them uh, recommend you and become an ambassador for you. So they were the things that I wanted to share with the five most effective things in business. I want to go to you now. I do have a couple of bonus things I want to talk to you about, and we'll do those before we knock off the call today. But what I want to do is I just want to get some feedback from everybody. Uh, that what are you doing to um, what are you doing to raise the bar and to be more effective in your business? Give me some ideas. You can either go to the chat, Pam, I see your hand up. So we're going to go to you first. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I got extremely excited when I talked about designer and I almost raised my book to say it's on the list. In fact, I'd say my designer has changed my world. He has stylized my work and made me look so good to the point where his brochures, everything he puts his hands to. I just cannot imagine this man could be so darn create, creative. And we've been working together for six years now and he just never ceases to amaze me. But as a result of his work, I've been able to continuously raise my fees and I don't get pitch back, a pitch pushback because of the fact that they're looking at what he's done and saying, okay, if, if that's what she's delivering me and I can get it to them really quickly, I can get a brochure to them really quickly, I can get my terms and conditions and it's just all looks great and it's all the same design as he's just done wonders for me. So I think it's it's the number one thing on my list um, for- I saw Diane Gorman nodding there when you talked about raising your fees because of your designer. And I know you've experienced that too, Di Diane. Well, you, you just raised your fees anyway because we told you to, but I mean- having a designer to, to back that up is is really good. You were going to say it's something cute. else, Pam? Uh, let's see, what else did I have on my list? Oh, I was going to say uh, another thing that's pushed my business is hiring consultants that truly walk their talk so that they I know that they are experts in their field and I only hired them, present company included, because I could see the results that they were bringing for themselves and other people versus people who just spew the bullshit and say that they're great at what they're doing, but not doing it. So successfully finding the key people who have elevated my business. Um, and then the third thing I would say that was responsible partially also for my success is making sure that I take care of my people. I hire a lot or use a lot of uh, freelancers, but the same people that have been with me for the last five or six years. 
And when their invoices come in, it may be 30 days, but I make a point to say when that invoice lands in my inbox, I turn around and I pay them sometimes within five minutes of that invoice. And they're always in shock, you know, but I want them to know that they're valuable to me um, because again, without them, I, I know I wouldn't be where I am. So taking care of my people uh, financially in a timely manner and having them stick with me uh, or making it possible for them to stay with me even during COVID. Um, even when I wasn't making so much money, I made sure that I didn't let them go that I kept them with me so that we could continue to grow together. So those Wonderful are my top. Feedback. And I loved what you said about uh, paying your contractors like super fast. I, I know, you know, one of our Circle of Excellence members, actually we had coffee with him yesterday, Rene Lombard. He is a stickler at this. Now he runs a big business, right? They've got over 70 full-time staff. But when he gets an invoice, he pays it within minutes of getting the invoice and sends the proof of payment. I know because I've invoiced him for a few things over the years and it blows me away every time. Doesn't matter where he is, he stops everything to pay that invoice. And what it does, it makes you really super loyal and want to over deliver for those people. Definitely. Anybody else got any insights before I go to my last couple of slides? Stephanie's very quiet today. It's nice to see you on the call, Stephanie. Uh, you're probably quiet because you're so cold because it's so darn cold here in, in this part of the world. Uh, you people in the in the in the tropics and in Europe, uh, it's really you're missing a very bold winter in the southern hemisphere, that's for sure. Let's uh let's jump back in. Just a couple more things, and these are really simple things, but really important things. Uh, so I said I'd give you five effective things in business and, and we've been through those. But what's number six? I think this one has served me so well over the years and that is saying no. Saying no to clients who could be a pain in the butt. Saying no to clients whose values don't resonate with you. Saying no to partnerships that don't resonate saying no to opportunities that don't res resign resonate. In other words, going to take you away from the mainstream or my may digress you for a little bit. The more you say no, the more the universe will reward you with yeses in what you want. I can't tell you how effective this one is. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, is don't think small. So many of us just think so small. And we think, we still think, I don't know, is this corporate that taught us this? You know, when I worked for a corporate, our, our budget would go up from one year to another by 7%. And I'd be trying to argue it down to 3%. And I'd probably settle at five, you know? So why is it these days that we only think that we should go up 7%? Why shouldn't we think that we should 10x next year or 5x? Now, one of the things that's really, you guys are good at this, but I want to install more of this for you. The people on this call are good at it. I know because we track it. So last year, the average Circle of Excellence member had a 61% increase in sales. That's good. Like that's so much better than the marketplace. And I can't remember the exact figure off the top of my head, but most of you had increased your price by around 30%. So that's good as well. So don't think small. Don't price small. Don't think small. So folks, that's what I wanted to share with you today. And uh, it's a good message to, to leave it with by saying, don't think small, play a bigger game, Richard says. Absolutely, 100%. Play a bigger game. It's a, a pleasure, as always, chatting with you today. I'll be back in a, in a few weeks' time. Uh, Landy will be back in a couple of weeks. And until then, you know where to find us. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and it's great to see you all. Bye-bye.